Michael C. Wright. I sound like it's the end of the series. I mean, that's no. our job to, to call it a day to say it's a wrap. It's Steph's job to say night night. I mean, there was a little bit of resignation, a lot of resignation, dare I say, in Jason Kidd's remarks talking about uh, y'all didn't expect us to be here. I appreciate the candor, but typically it's like, hey, we got to get one at home and then try to get it back home is how right. coaches would usually look at it and say it not. Hey, we just happy to be here. We're ahead of schedule. Nobody thought we'd be here. Yada, yada, yada. I mean, how's, how, how's that playing in the locker room? And do you sense and you're covering this series? You're joining us from Dallas. Do you sense that there is a, a level of resignation, especially after blowing that leading game two uh, among the Dallas Mavericks themselves? Was he speaking truth there? No, that's what it sounds like. I mean, you know, he said it's the beginning of the journey, but to me, it sounds like the end. Um, but I got to say this about Jason Kidd. If you go all the way back to the Western Conference semis when they got down 0-2 to Phoenix, Jason Kidd was saying the exact same thing. And, you know, one thing that I've sort of figured out about Jason is he's got the buy-in from that whole locker room. Those guys believe in him. They trust him. So, yes, on one hand, they are talking about, you know, hey, this is a new experience for us. We're learning. You know, we've got to play these games. Uh, championships were never won by these teams right off the bat. You had to go through the good, the bad, the ugly, and learn about yourself and learn about your team. And so that's been the message throughout the entire playoffs for him, for, for Jason Kidd. If you go back to the first round when they lost game one to Utah on their home floor, same thing. So, you know, I, I think that that message has been pretty, pretty standard throughout the playoffs. And it does sound like resignation, but I, I, I think that's sort of a, a, an outward thing. I think inwardly, you know, those guys are a bunch of dogs that want to get this thing, you know, get a game so they can at least go to Golden State and have a game five. But let me, uh, let me play devil's advocate with myself. Is this a Jedi mind trick too? This is one's this a, a opportunity to keep these guys relaxed because okay, here's Luca and 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 Dallas and while they may be playing with house money from the outside, they're at home trying not to get swept. Is this a way to say, "Hey guys, look man, nobody expected us to be here anyway. Let's just go out and play loose. We got nothing to lose." Everybody's already sure. crown Golden State talked about their dynasty. There's no pressure on us even at home to win a game against this group. Go out because I mean they, they can't hit the broad side of a barn right now, you know, especially from three. Maybe is this a way of relaxing them to say, hey, play, you know, play free, play loose. You ain't got nothing to lose. You shouldn't be here anyway. Go win game four. We'll see what happens. Could it be that? To your point yeah, about the of this team. I, I think I think that is the case because again, they go down 0-2 to Phoenix. Same thing. It was the same thing. It was like this whole relaxing type of deal. Like, hey, you know. None of you picked us to be here anyway. And the team is saying that. Like, there are a couple of, you know, our colleagues that work at ESPN, and those guys are getting killed on a daily basis by the players. I'm serious. Like, I, one of our colleagues was wearing a pair of uh, Adidas Stan Smiths and Tim Hardaway Jr. after they, they beat Phoenix, uh, when they, you know, got them, beat them on their home floor. He was like something about keep picking against us, and he talked about his bum ass Stan Stan Smith. And I was like, "Dang, man, you went to his shoes." I mean, like, I got a question: if viewing choices, but that's neither here nor there. But their, cho their choices in television are questionable. But anyway, you yeah, were I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, not, that's neither here nor there. You know, I, you know, I'm petty. <laughs> oh, oh, me too. Trust me, <laughs> I am too. But no, it was you know like the the, the entire staff picked, yeah. you know, Phoenix to beat Dallas naturally. Right. And those guys really took it personally. And I think that Jason Kidd in that locker room, he's telling those guys that nobody's picking you. Like you said, the Jedi, Jedi Maya trick. And, you know, so outwardly they're, you know, they're playing this humble game and saying, hey, we're learning. This is just the beginning of the journey. And even last right. night after Luka Doncic was like a, what, something like minus 19, you know, he, he talked about it. He said, hey, I'm 23 years old, man. I'm still learning. And, you know, I've got to take him at his word. But at the end of the day, these guys are competitors, man. They want to win these games. Nobody goes out there saying, oh, well, we're, we're here. Uh, shoot, yeah. it's just good enough to be here. And I don't think that's the case for these guys. Do you think they'll win a game? 
Will the Mavericks win a game or are they about to get swept? Michael, I would say pull out the bro, my man. And, you know, the, the one thing that's really surprised me throughout this series is that against Phoenix, Jason Kidd made some some great adjustments. And, and, and I would say that those adjustments won them the series. You know, I, I like Phoenix used, would, would talk about, hey, we're a paint to great team. Well, Dallas was like, you know what? We'll take away the paint. Now you got to be great to beat us. And that's what they did. They shut down Chris Paul, shut down Devin Booker. And I haven't seen the same types of adjustments. And I, I'm sure that this is a case of, you know, different personnel with Golden State. You know, you've got three three future Hall of Famers on the floor, and you got another guy in Andrew Wiggins who is just balling. Like, all-star Andrew Wiggins showed up for this series, man. And so I, I think that that's been, a, been an issue for them. They, they, they just don't have the horses to run this race. You know, they all they have is Luka Doncic at this point. And I think that this is... One of those sort of like an experiment to say to see if okay we have this transcendent singular superstar can we win against the upper echelon of teams with just this guy or do we do we have to get him some help and I'm pretty sure this offseason Dallas is going to do everything it can to get Luca that help. Luca has three yeah. games where he scored 40 or more in a loss. Tied with LeBron in 09, Kareem in 77, and Jerry West in 65, Michael, for most in a single postseason. That's right. Yeah, and you know two what? and six. You know, two and six when he scores 40. So that's not a good thing. Oh, two. See, yeah. see, Michaels, that that's why I believe that they're not necessary. I'm gonna disagree with Jason Kidd and say they're not at the beginning. I, I I know he's talking big picture. They're not at the beginning because if you go back to the Warriors and they lost to the Clippers. I think in a seven game yep. series in yep. 14. They had clay. They had Steph. they had Draymond. They had their core. The core was already in, in place that they changed their coach, but their core was there. Dallas does not have if you run this back, you're not going like to get bottle. the same result, right? Right. Like they may have you, caught lightning they, in a ball this year. Yeah, they yeah need, no doubt about it. What would you say Mike uh, Michael Wright? Would you say they need one more? Or two more, because I, I I'd be inclined to say they may need two more. Bodies. I would say two, I would say two. But number one, and like I, I got to be careful with how I word this. Um, but the the biggest thing to me is they need to get a center. He, he doesn't have to be great. Rim protection. Yes, he does not have to be great. Uh, get a rim running guy like a Clint Capella or somebody that's, you know, can catch those lobs and, and Luka Doncic can kind of play that game that James Harden used to play with him in Houston. Similar, you know, they're, they're similar styles or whatever. And that's number one that you, you got to have a, just a legit center. Now Dwight Powell is actually, you know, he's two years removed from a torn Achilles. He's been fine, but fine ain't good enough when you get to this level of competition. You know, you you need somebody that is going to stand out and, and take some of the pressure off Luca. And like you said, Mike, rim protection. That's a big deal. Yo, the last person I would want to see if I were Boston, and I got a let's call it a must win. It's not an elimination game, but let's just go ahead and, you know, borrow that cliche and call it a must win game to avoid being on the brink of elimination at home is Jimmy Butler, who's gonna play mm. tonight. We'll see about Marcus Smart and uh, Robert Williams. I got I to gotta check the updates there to figure, figure out if they are uh, going to be active or not. But bottom line is, like, even though Boston's lost only two quarters through three games, they've lost two games. And I just wonder if Jimmy Butler is going to make them pay for that. I just wonder if they fooled around with, the, with this series a little mo too much more than they should have and blown it already. Or... Am I underestimating, once again, Boston's ability to respond? How do you see that series? Do y'all know Ime Udoka? <laughs> that man don't play. Yes. That man yeah, does man. not play. And I'm he telling you, recess. I'm telling you, man, if that dude has to suit up himself to make things right, he's that type of dude. So I, I guarantee you that he's got those, he's going to have those guys ready to play. He's going to make whatever adjustments need to be made. And, you know, you don't, you don't expect them to turn over the ball. I don't know. I don't remember how many times they turned it over last game, but I know uh, Miami scored like 33 points just off those turnovers. 
That's the I know they got game, ripped man. 19 times. I know it was yeah, 19 steals. I know that and, number. And Victor Oladipo was looking like Marcus Smart out there. 24 <laughs> yeah, turnovers. 24. But, yeah, so 24. I, that's not going to happen again. Jason Tatum is not going to go out there and score 10 points and turn it over six times. That's not going to happen. You know, and for all the talk, you know, going into the season, like I, I, our brother, Mark Spears at Anscape, if you remember, he did this big story on, on Jason Tatum and about – how he's doing all this stuff to to get himself to the level where he's considered, you know, an upper echelon player, a, you know, a mainstay in the MVP conversation. Well, you've achieved that, Jason. Well, now you have to build on it. And this is where your reputation is made in the playoffs. I know Stinger or whatever, but he may said that the Stinger is pretty much gone and Jason is good to go. But he's not going to go out there and have another bad night. And I don't care how well Miami defends them. They're going to have answers. I promise you that. Like I, I, I would be shocked if Boston doesn't blow out Miami tonight. Oh, wow. Really? Oh, I'll, I'll wow. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll be shocked. The opposite oh, extreme. Well, listen, and that's what yeah. this series has been, is a, is a, is a lot of blow up. I'll tell you what, though, man. I could also see us sitting in tomorrow, Michael, having another uh, Jimmy Butler appreciation day. Yeah, I, that, that's right. Know, no, no Tyler yeah. Hero. I know the yeah, knees inflamed and whatnot, but you know, I, I could I could see him bubble Jimmy Butler burst in that bubble too. I can see that. So happening. yeah, we gonna, we yeah. gonna see him uh, hunched over on the side of the the, the floor after the game. Energy this spent. This is time of year, the, man. This is time is, of year. He, he the type of dude that smells blood. Hey, he that type of dude. You know. Oh, I, he I is. Tell you Jimmy, this, Jimmy's I, a beast. Last thing I'll say for you, uh, uh, Michael Wright, is this. Uh, you you have made me uh, want to go back and be a beat writer just temporarily. Because what you said about Ime Adoka is 100%. Not only is Ime that dude who always who gets buying from his players, I can't imagine a more honest coach. Like, if you ask him, hey, what did you see out there? He does not hold back. He'll tell you exactly mm -hmm. what he saw. Who was at fault, whether it was the first, the number one player or the 13th or 14th best player on the roster? He'll just tell you everything. He'll just tell sure. you exactly what he's thinking. I've never covered anybody like that. I like to cover him for a season or maybe a half a season. And then then the travel will wear me down, Mike, because I, you know, I don't that well, life anymore. But. I, I'm not either. I mean, I'm kind of, I'm not a beat guy anymore. But during my beat writing days when I was covering the San Antonio Spurs, I got to know him. You know when he was an assistant with the Spurs, and that dude is intense, man. And I, I, and and Boston is going to sort of carry on that demeanor in this game. They're at home; they blew a they blew a great opportunity, you know, in Game Three. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, what was it like? They started the game out like uh, Miami was on like a twenty four seven run just to start that game. They got hit in the mouth, and. He made the type of dude that's gonna get up and be ready to to, to fight again. I mean, he made oh. that dude, and I, I'm telling you, he's not gonna let that team have another bad performance, especially at you know at the guard. That's not happening. I I, I the email Joker's preparation and the Celtics focus and intensity is the least of my concern. But we all know Miami got some dudes too. They got some dogs. They do. Yeah, they do. Led led they by do. one of the best two or three coaches in the NBA. Led yeah. by one of the best competitors, the the number one pick of the number one pick of the I gotta win this game tonight draft <laughs> overall is Jimmy Butler. The one of my picks I, I like depends on it is Jimmy Butler. It's hard to call it because they can fight. Yeah, Bam out of bios back call. in this series, but the Heat Listen, are man, beat they, down. I mean, like they've got like four four or five players tonight that are going to what, what was the the tweet they put out. They're going to warm up with the intent to play. Uh, you know, and <laughs> yeah. PJ Tucker, yeah, PJ Tucker's a dog. I mean, <laughs> Kyle Lowry is a dog, but those guys are, are yeah. beat up, and Jimmy's beat up too. They're so, dogs. They're wounded yes, dogs. Yes, they it's are. A, but you do know, you know yeah. Smart and Williams are going to play? What about them? But that's uh, it's, it's an availability. No. It's a war of attrition at right. this point. I think they're questionable at this point. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was looking at that. We'll see. Yeah, but we'll see. those guys are going to play. He may is going to talk them into playing. Watch. Yeah. Telling you, man. You you guys are gonna learn about the power of Ime Udoka. I'm I'm, I'm oh, so. Oh, I already know about the power of. I oh, had I to cover him in yeah, San yeah. Antonio to know about the or Boston <laughs> to know about the power of Ime Udoka, and I just leave that there. Ime Udoka yeah, yeah, has yeah. got my respect for life.
That man, I, I, I'm so happy to see him in Boston, man, because he, you know, he was interviewing and interviewing and interviewing for all these jobs. And nobody would give him a shot. He finally got it in, in just the right place. I mean, Boston is the right place for him. Oh, he, oh, he's already stuff, shot his shot and succeeded in life. He is one in life. And I won't go any oh, farther. Yeah. We, we, we Michael ain't going right. there, we're, <laughs> You know, we're not. No, we're not. We're not. I love you, man. Thank you. We love you. Appreciate you. All right, All right Mike. Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.